Let me ask you a question. If you had the ability to go back in time and talk to your 20-year-old self, what would you tell you? Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Simple Sober Life. I am Joshua, and I help others make simple changes to create a life of awesome. Welcome, my friends. I'm so excited to have you with me. If you haven't yet subscribed, please make sure to do so right now, and we will get into this content. I'm also available on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll link those down below. So, I was at work, <laughs> as I normally am, and it has been absolutely crazy at work. The bosses, uh, we've had visitors all week, and so the bosses have been on a rampage, and it's just been a whirlwind of excitement, for lack of a better term. But we were, a, a couple of guys were standing back in my area, and I think that has kind of been the unofficial uh, break area when people just need to get away from their areas. They kind of come and congregate um, back where I work, which is cool. I mean, but all the guys are pretty cool, so we just kind of shoot the breeze and, and, you know, for a couple of minutes and then get on with our merry way. But uh, there are a couple of guys I work with, they're in their early 20s. And, um, you know, I was witnessing a conversation go on between a 22 year old guy and a 29 year old guy. And the 29 year old guy, um, he uh, went to school for pre-law, you know, he's got a really good head on his shoulders. But, you know, as he was explaining, you know, he basically brought himself up from nothing and he's learned a lot of things along the way. As to where the 22 year old is very naive, um, and very, um, you know, uh, idealistic and independent and, you know, he doesn't really listen to anything that anyone says. And as I was watching this conversation go on, I kind of drifted off for a minute and I started to think about what I would tell myself um, if I could go back in time uh, to when I was 20 years old. What what um, advice would I give myself if I had that ability? And it's it's strange that this should come up because it actually just popped in my head. Um, a couple of years ago when I was working at a restaurant, a one of uh, the servers uh, came up to me and asked me, would you, if you could, would you take a million dollars right now or would you go back to when you were 20 uh, with the knowledge that you have now and do it all over again. And hands down, flat out, my answer was, I would totally do it all again. Um, you know, especially with the knowledge and, and information that I have now. You know, I've, I've grown up, I've matured. Uh, I know a little bit more about life than I did when I was 20. Um, and so I would definitely do that because I think I could have achieved so much more if I had that knowledge. And so if I had the ability to go back and tell myself the things of, at 20 years old, what would I tell myself? And I've made a list of a couple of different items. First and foremost, I would tell myself to take care of my body. <laughs> Here I am sitting at 39 years old and everything creaks and the muscles are aching and you know, I've got bones that have been broken and you know, just getting out of bed, I'm all stiff and whatnot. And yoga helps a little bit, but I mean, there's only so much that a couple of stretches and some, some exercises would do. But um, you know, one of the biggest things that I would do if I could go back and do it all again would be to never pick up a cigarette. Um, those things have just controlled my life for, well, I started smoking at 15. And so for 24 years now, more than half of my life they've controlled, uh, they've had a, a power and a control over me. 
and it has, and that of course bleeds into alcohol. Um, you know, I had my first drink at seven, I think, seven or eight years old. Um, and you know, once I, I learned that I could freely drink however I wanted, um, then I totally went full force into that. I would also tell myself to, you know, take care of my body with the foods that I ingested. When I was in high school, especially my junior, senior year, my first couple of years of college, I basically lived on Snickers bars, sodas, and fast food, and you know, anything I could get in my mouth, because I always considered myself too busy to really eat properly. Um, I wasn't really interested in, in working out or going to the gym at that time. And so I, I was on the go. I mean, I wasn't fat back then, but you know, the toxic foods and the toxic chemicals that I would put in my body were, were crazy. And I would tell myself to wear sunscreen <laughs> and moisturize. I look in the mirror now and I can start, I can see, you know, the adverse effects of, you know, putting coconut oil or, you know, baby oil all over my skin to try and get that, that tan and that, that beautiful glow that I so wanted to have. But I would definitely tell myself to take better care of myself. And speaking of sunscreen, um, another thing that kind of got me thinking about this was there is a fantastic song. And I, uh, uh, it, it's, well, I think it's about 20 years old or so. Um, it's by Boz Luhrmann. And if you don't know Boz Luhrmann, he is a famous uh, director, makes beautiful films like Moulin Rouge, um, I think uh, The Last Tango, uh, Australia, things like that. Well, I think he did a commencement speech for the class of 1999, which is the year I graduated. Woo -woo! Spring Break 99! Anyway, it's called Sunscreen, and it's basically a list of advice to um, the graduating class at that time. But that advice holds so strong right now. And if you haven't heard it, I highly encourage you to go look it up. It's called Sunscreen by Boz Luhrmann. It's fantastic. Um, so taking better care of myself. Another thing that I would tell myself would be to stop wasting time worrying about what others think of me. I have wasted an immense amount of time trying to fit into the right groups. That's one of the reasons why I started smoking. You know, I couldn't really hang with the jocks because I wasn't a jock. Um, I couldn't really hang with the nerds because I wasn't a nerd, I guess. Um, but I had this kind of rebellious feeling in me. This feeling of needing to be independent and, and kind of the wow child. And so, you know, I started hanging out with um, that type of clique and I started smoking and sneaking off campus and, and going and uh, smoking with them in before school um, in a little community just across the street from school. Um, definitely got in school suspension a couple of times, definitely got detention a couple of times, you know, and it was because I wanted to fit in with that group. But it didn't end after high school. You know, I've always, you know, I, I've always kind of prided myself on being a chameleon as to where, you know, I try to fit in all these different types of groups. Just so I can, I don't know, kind of um, fluff up my ego card or, you know, stroke my ego, whatever you want to call it, knowing that, oh, I'm liked by all these different people. These people like me. And so, you know, I spent a lot of time and a lot of energy, you know, just trying to keep up with maintaining how others perceived me. And, you know, it wasn't until I, you know, actually became, well, not an adult, but actually started to mature and, you know, really come into my own that those kind of feelings kind of slipped away. And now I'm more able to just be who I am and, you know, not really care what other people think of me. You know, it's nothing for me to have my my earbuds in and go to the grocery store with my cart and start hmm, dancing, 
or whatever right there in the aisle. I try to make my life fun and you know, I'm sure I get some weird stares at times, but I don't even notice it. I really don't even pay attention anymore. But um, yes, I would not waste so much time worrying about what others think of me. Another thing that I would uh, definitely, definitely um, uh, talk about or uh, talk to myself about would be finances. And that's where the, um, the two guys working uh, who, at work who were having this conversation that kind of sparked all this, this was their topic. You know, the older one was trying to give the younger one advice about, you know, purchasing a home and, you know, creating a, a second stream of in income by renting it out and things like that. And the younger kid was just kind of off in la la land if he wasn't making excuses or, you know, coming up with different things, whatever. Finances. I would absolutely talk to myself about finances. And, you know, like having to fit in everywhere, I had to make sure that I had the uh, most recent designer jeans, the most recent designer clothes, the sunglasses, the shoes, you know, I had to be all decked out. But all of those things went out of style like a month later. And I had nothing to show for it except an, an empty bank account. I would absolutely start paying myself first. And I would have started investing a long, long time ago. Another thing that I would tell myself was, would be your past is in your past and it's past. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing that you can do about it now. And the only if way that it can possibly affect you is if you allow it to. Now, I had some trouble sometimes growing up and I'm sure that had some sort of influence on um, how it has shaped my life today. But there is absolutely nothing I can do about it. You know, just like I'm not able to go back and talk to my 20 year old self, I'm not able to change anything that has already happened. The only thing that I can do in this um, instance and at this time is learn from it, grow from it, and help others with it. And so, you know, I, I would play the victim of my circumstances quite a bit based on, you know, what I had experienced in my past. And, you know, all it did was keep me stuck. It allowed me to create more excuses. It allowed me to, you know, be fearful of taking risks and chances. And, you know, I, I would highly encourage myself and tell myself, to leave it where it is, and that was in the past. Another thing I would tell myself would be instead of focusing on money and depending on money to bring me happiness, to find happiness within myself and within you know, the world around me at that time, especially when it comes to enriching the lives of others. You know, when I was younger, I would chase that almighty dog. And I would work two, three jobs at a time just so I could get my hands on more money. Of course, I had nothing to show for it uh, because I would just spend all that money. But I relied on, you know, getting all of those paychecks to bring me happiness. And that happiness was very materialistic. And, you know, right now I basically have hardly anything. You know, um, after leaving Atlanta, um, you know, what I couldn't have my sister come and get, you know, I'd either sold or, you know, left behind. And, you know, in moving from Florida, I only had a couple of boxes. Everything was Ryan's. I really had nothing uh, when, it, when it all boiled down. And, you know, I'm okay with that right now. <laughs> I'm okay with that um, because I know that I am creating happiness for myself that I can't hold in my hands. 
and that is through new experiences and that is through helping others and that is through you know learning new things and i'm creating this happiness around me that doesn't cost a dollar well let's not go crazy um <laughs> everything costs something um but the happiness that i feel within now far outweighs that happiness I strove to get through um, uh, purchasing items and monetary uh, value. And that is a cool, cool feel. Another thing that I would tell myself is don't be so impulsive. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. You know, I've always been the type of person that, um, you know, I get an idea and I kind of jump into it. I don't give it any thought about how it might affect me, how it might affect others, how what the outcomes might be, what I might need in order to succeed. I would just jump in and go for it. And, you know, sometimes that played out pretty well. But I would have had a lot easier of a time had I actually taken a couple of minutes to step back and actually make a plan for it. And I'm experiencing this now with a simple sober life. Um, you know, I got the idea in my head one day uh, after, after moving in with my sister and you know, I just kind of jumped in and it was going nowhere fast. And it wasn't until I actually sat down and you know, made a plan for what my vision was for this company um, that it actually started building and growing. And now it, it's, I'm up over 10,000 followers on, on Facebook, over a thousand on YouTube, and I'm helping people around the world. And it's, it's actually growing larger than I could have imagined. And I, it's just such a rewarding feeling, but I can, I can award that success to actually taking time to um, make a plan and, you know, take the necessary actions to achieve that. Another thing that I would tell myself would be to appreciate and nurture the relationships that I had. You know, we all have people that come in and are out of our lives and I'm not just, um, you know, um, partners, but, you know, friends and family members and everything. I was really, really egotistical and self-centered and narcissistic, like especially when I was younger, especially in my 20s. Um, you know, I was pretty good looking and I basically thought people were kind of disposable. And that might sound terrible, um, but, you know, I just knew people would come in and out of my life and I really didn't think much of it. Um, I didn't appreciate the relationships that I had and I certainly didn't do anything to nurture them so that they could grow into lasting, you know, relationships. Um, there are, I think I have about a handful of people uh, in my life that I can, that I talk to on a uh, a regular basis. I mean, um, regular, uh, that sounds like I, I communicate with them, you know, on a, consistently, but that's not even the case. A handful of people that, you know, I can pick up with right where I left off. Um, and, you know, I would, I wish, don't say wish, because we, n nothing comes from wishes. If I could tell myself something uh, when I was uh, 20 years old, it would be to better appreciate and nurture the good ones. You know, um, of course the toxic people that have come in my life, you know, I'm glad they're gone. But the ones who actually lifted me up and, um, you know, uh, we had mutual communication and mutual, you know, understanding and, and you know, kind of helped each other out those are the ones that I wish I would have taken more time to um, uh, put effort into. One of the big things that I would tell myself if I could at 20 years old would be to stand up for yourself. Now, I've always been very passive. Uh, you know, I kind of just let things go. 
but I have been put in a number of different situations that I didn't feel comfortable with. But I went along with it because I wasn't able to stand up for myself. I was in toxic relationships and I allowed it to continue on because I was too afraid to stand up for myself. And I was bullied in high school because I was afraid to stand up for myself. And of course that, I'm sure that uh, plays a part in, you know, becoming mature and becoming more comfortable with who I am. But I really would like to tell myself to, you know, if you might get punched in the nose, but at least you took a stand. At least you stood up for yourself and you had enough confidence in yourself to um, know something wasn't right and, you know, stand up for your values. That is something that has always, you know, kind of plagued me. Um, uh, not, not being assertive enough to stand up for myself. Something else I would tell myself, and I never really held much value for it until, you know, recently. And that is finding spirituality. You know, I've always known that I am not the all supreme being of the universe. <laughs> I've always known that there's something greater out there, but I never took any stride, I never took any action to actually discover what that means to me. And, you know, in taking steps to try and come to more of an understanding of my beliefs and, you know, what the universe means to me and that spiritual um, energy that surrounds it has really kind of filled a, a void, um, you know, that I've had for most of my life. And, you know, it, it brings me happiness. It brings a smile to my face to know that, you know, maybe I'm not totally in control of everything that happens in Josh's world. You know, it definitely takes a lot of burden. It definitely eases some stress. Now, I'm not going to say I'm totally 100% there, and I, I may never be. But I'm okay with that because I'm continuously trying to make strides to achieve uh, a level of spirituality that, um, that I'd like to have. Another thing that I would tell myself at 20 years old is don't quit on your passion. And, you know, my passion at the time was um, acting. You know, I wanted to be a, 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 a movie star. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what... No, that's not true. I knew exactly what um, what lured me into that. I, I did acting all through high school, college, did some in LA. Um, but it was, for me, it was the opportunity to create a world that wasn't my own. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. And be able to draw people in to that world. You know, one of the greatest experiences that I've had in life is when I'm up on stage and, you know, I'm, I'm in a character and I can see people being drawn in. And, and intoxicated and hanging on to the words that's, that come out, out of my mouth. And it's such a cool, cool feeling. Um, and, you know, so I wanted to pursue that. That was my passion. That's what I loved to do. I would literally, <laughs> I, 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 my, base, my room was in the basement when I was growing up. And I would put on <laughs> musicals. <laughs> I would put on Phantom of the Opera. I would put on Jesus Christ Superstar. I would put on Les Mis. I would put on, you know, Cats, whatever. And uh, not only would I act out every single part of the performance, I would also direct. And so I had this whole universe down there in my room 
that I was creating based on, you know, a musical or, you know, whatever, or movies. I would obsess about certain movies and I would recreate the scenes like down in my room. And I don't know, it was just something I was always so passionate about. And, but I gave it up. I allowed myself to stop believing that I could do it and allowed myself to get distracted by other um, other things and so I quit and um, you know that's something that may plague me for the rest of my life but fortunately other passions have come up and you know I'm able to pursue those at 100%. And to wrap this up, and it kind of comes full circle based on the conversation I was witnessing at work, was I would tell myself to listen to more experienced people. You know, I was so idealistic, I was so egotistical, and I really wanted, I had the mindset that I was going to figure things out for myself. And so anytime someone would give me advice, like the 22 year old at work, I would just kind of, you know, let it, let it wash over me, kind of brush it off and then be like, okay, that fool doesn't know what he's talking about. This is me. But there are certain principles in life that, ev that affect everyone. One of them is financial. You know, if you save your money and you invest properly, then you know you'll be on a good course. Well, I couldn't do it that way. Um, and you know, so many other lessons that would have been easier, and I probably would have progressed much quicker had I taken the advice of a more mature, experienced person. Dad, if you're watching, talking about you. <laughs> My dad gave me so much advice that I just didn't listen to. And, you know, I really wished I had. One of the things that, you know, he uh, tried to uh, kind of motivate me to do was go into the military. And, you know, I was so adverse to doing that. I just didn't see myself in the military. I didn't see myself on a rigorous routine under discipline and, you know, being yelled at at six o'clock in the morning to run five miles or whatever it was. But I'm willing to bet my life probably would have been better had I actually gotten that discipline because apparently I didn't have any. At least, <laughs> at least not enough. <laughs> but, um, you know, I would definitely listen to the people who have come before me, who have done all of this before, and, you know, just taken so much stress and anxiety and out of my life. <laughs> but anyway, my friend, well, hold on. Kind of seems like I should be uh, telling my 39-year-old self this right now. You know, stop worrying about what other people think about you. Invest wisely. Putting the stuff in the past. You know, um, and all of those things. And so these are definitely lessons that I can learn from right now and implement them into my life. Some of them I'm doing. You know, um, some of them come, I guess, easier with age. But, you know, we can't go back and talk to our 20-year-old self. But what we can do is we can implement the advice that we would give our 20 self, 20 year old self, right now. My friends, I hope you got value out of this. Please make sure to give this video a big old thumbs up if you did. Comment down below. I would love to hear what you would tell your 20, uh, 20 year old self. Make sure to subscribe, my friends. And until next time, 